Welcome to All About Town, Peterborough's monthly video update. I'm Barbara Miller, Selectman. All About Town was created as a resource for you to learn about what's happening in town and also to discover the many reasons why we can be proud to be residents here. We're taping this evening from the Peterborough Townhouse and if, for those of you that may not know it and haven't been there, we're located on the corner of Main Street and Rose Street in the historic downtown Peterborough. Um, today we're going to be videotaping a planning board meeting and with me this evening is Joel Harrington, who's the chairman of our planning board. And then to my left, your right, is uh, Pete Troop, who's our director of community development and uh, planning. The, uh, the role of the planning board is set out in the state statute. Uh, and uh, the towns are authorized to have a planning board. And uh, they have two primary categories of function. Uh, one is uh, regulatory and the other is non-regulatory uh, types of, of tasks that they do. The non-regulatory piece is, uh, includes um, developing the master plan and uh, the other part of that is also developing a capital improvement program for the town. Uh, in the case of Peterborough, um, the planning board has appointed, or, or the select board has appointed a master plan steering committee that assists with the development of the master plan. Um, and then it's ultimately the planning board would vote on adopting that. Um, and then the uh, town has also appointed a, a, a CIP or capital improvement program committee that uh, puts that information together, helps uh, takes information from the, uh, the departments in town um, about what their long-term uh, planning needs are going to be, and then brings that uh, together in a report that goes to the budget committee. Uh, the regulatory portion uh, that the planning board is involved in begins with uh, drafting and reviewing and considering and putting together um, zoning ordinances, site plan regulations, and subdivision regulations that are used to um, evaluate um, uh, development that's going to happen in town and help guide it into those places where it's most appropriate. Um, so part of it is developing those ordinances that are eventually voted on at town meeting, uh, and then the other part of it is applying those to development that's brought to, to the town. Good evening. It's uh, a pleasure to be back here in Peterborough um, after a hiatus of six months or so, and it's, it's nice to see some of the faces that I met in the fall and the winter. Um, for those of you who may not have met me before, my name is Carolyn Radish. Um, I am a partner with ORW Landscape Architects and Planners. Uh, we are in the Upper Valley. Um, we work in New Hampshire and Vermont mostly, but further abroad also. In, um, we are, as the name implies, Landscape Architects and Planners. We work for communities. Um, we also design and build, um, work on teams that design and build um, products so we understand design from you know the zoning point of view as well as from the design point of view. Um, I'm working with Roger Hawk who's also a planner. Um, he does a lot of community planning and economic work in um, the New Hampshire area. He's a former planning director in um, Concord and has been a longtime president of um, Plan New Hampshire which is a statewide planning organization. He could not make it here tonight, but he, we worked collaboratively on this project. So I just wanted to summarize sort of where we've been and where we're going. And um, why are we doing this project? So in Peterborough, there's concern about the only residential growth opportunities are in the rural area. And that means three acre lot subdivisions across the rural area. Many people um, would like to see the rural area preserved. Um, the master plan also wants to promote more housing in town and there's many reasons for that. In town living is attractive because it can accommodate a range of household needs um, and this is tied a lot to um, demographic trends. So we're a state that's been graying, getting older, we're all getting older. Um, the baby boom gener generation is retiring, not wanting to drive as much and you know as people get older, it's probably a good thing to have more of a, of a place where you can live, uh, where you don't have as big a piece of property to take care of, and where you can walk to at least some facilities, a grocery store, perhaps a library. So 
Um, working for a range of households is another goal. Um, reducing the pressure to subdivide rural lands is another goal. Um, adding social and economic vitality to the town center, so for the shops to have more residents that live close in and can walk through on a daily basis is attractive also. And it's a more walkable, bikeable, and conducive to transit lifestyle. So we've looked at this project through that lens. Um, in terms of the timeline, we began work last October um, in Peterborough with some um, interviewing, talking to different community residents and sort of getting our bearings um, with the town geography. Um, we held two public workshops that were broadly noticed. We had a community workshop in November and then a follow-up community workshop in December. Um, and we had good attendance at both of those workshops. They were Saturday workshops and um, we had uh, different people. We talked about the issues um, revolving around, you know, carefully allowing some new family housing in existing in-town um, neighborhoods. Um, we talked about quite a few um, concerns and those comments from those workshops are reflected in the proposed draft ordinance. Um, we also spoke with the planning board in January and February when we came up with the draft ordinance. Um, and that's what you're seeing before you. I would like to emphasize this is a draft at this point and that we're looking for input from the community before uh, moving forward. And we've put our heads together, we've responded to comments. Um, several people came to the January and February workshops as well. And um, so a lot of comments and thought have gone into this, but I'm sure there's things that we should consider that will come up tonight. So to summarize the proposed ordinance, it allows additional dwelling units in the family and general residence district on larger lots within a defined area. And I'll show you the map in a minute. Um, it, the units would be allowed as a conditional use. There's criteria in terms of lot size, setbacks, um, and uh, frontage requirements. And it would be reviewed by the planning board. Notice would be given to the neighbors, so there's a public hearing. Um, and the Planning Commission can say yes or no. Um, there is design criteria that's provided as guidance in the ordinance that is intended to provide a good fit between um, existing and new houses. Um, I'm going to go a step-by-step -step, um, example with an example lot um, to see how the process works. The map that's attached to your um, packet is the, the boundaries, and those are shown in purple here. This circle here is showing a half mile radius from where we are right now, the geographic heart of the town. So as a starting point for um, identifying a district, we wanted to get something that is fairly walkable, and a half mile is a fairly reasonable walk for most people. Um, and so if you go out beyond there, you pick up, the yellow is showing the family district, and the green is showing the general residence district. So there's areas around the downtown. So I'm gonna go step by step with an example. Okay, I have a lot. I'm interested in possibly um, having an additional house on my lot. Um, is it in the plan area? That's the first question. Yes, it is. It's in the family district. Um, is it in an existing subdivided area? It is in an existing subdivided area. Um, can it be served by town water and sewer? Yes, it can. So those are the first questions right there. If no is the answer to any of those questions, then you're not eligible for this, um, for this ordinance. How big is my lot? Okay, I took an example here. This green boundary is showing the overall lot, so that's a fairly big lot. That's an acre, more than an acre and a half. Uh, do I have 75 feet of frontage for the new lot? So that's another requirement. So I can 
subdivide off one side and still have 75 feet for frontage. Okay, so that's yes. Um, there's not a lot of lots in that category, but in this particular case, that's possible. Can you get a 10,000 square foot area for that lot? In this case, the answer is yes, because again, this is a very large lot. So that, that's all so far good. So what that means is that this parcel meets the minimum standards of the ordinance and can be divided. The next question is, what is my front setback? And on the ordinance, in terms of coming up with the standards that we came up for minimum frontages and setbacks, we were being very um, concerned about what is the prevailing neighborhood patterns. And so what we're saying here in terms of developing the front setback line for the new house, we want you to look at the adjacent homes. So in this case, we have 28, 25 feet setback on one side, the existing house, 25 foot setback, and the adjoining lot is 35. So we average those three and we come up with 28 feet. So that's about a 28 foot setback here. So that's where the building setback would be required. So the next question then, what is the building envelope within this new lot? And basically we have 10 foot side setbacks and we have a front setback at 28 feet and we have a coverage requirement of, of 25%. So when you calculate all that, you get an area like this within that lot of where the house can be placed. And that's the overall place, placement. You, you probably would not take up this full area with the building, but that's the general placement of the new, new house. So then we come into, those are just the basic given zoning standards. Then we have consideration of some design issues in, in the neighborhoods. And what we're looking at, and we talked about this a lot in the, the neighborhood workshops, is responding to basic neighborhood patterns that are characteristic. Um, the street orientation of the building. So does the building face the street? Where's the front door? Um, front setback patterns, which we talked about, and, and the setbacks are averaging um, your adjoining neighbors. And I should say the front setback patterns vary greatly in Peterborough, and that's why we just want to look at the two adjoining lots. It's, you know, it's much like, you know, your teeth. <laughs> you want them to look, you know, attractive in a row, um, not too crooked, and um, a, a little bit is interesting. Um, so it's the same kind of idea. So we're, we're responding to the neighborhood patterns. Um, parking should go behind and away from the street. Landscaping and trees is a, a prevalent feature of neighborhoods. Um, we want to preserve and reuse historic buildings to the extent possible. Um, there's a definite period of interest in, in Peterborough. Um, and, you know, we want to protect those buildings. So that is a consideration with this as well. And respond to recurring architectural features. So what does that mean in terms of building patterns? In this area, the, the houses fall into two basic categories. I would say traditional houses, which were built uh, late um, 19th, early 20th century, typically have, were, we're going to be considering roof lines, window patterns, front door patterns, the massing of the building, which I have a diagram for, but how the building orients to the street. Is the main building mass perpendicular, like these buildings, or is it parallel to the street? So that's massing. So this is an example of traditional. And then there's also some more contemporary play, uh, buildings, too. So you're going to fall into one of these two categories. So when you're thinking about 
general patterns of a new house on a new lot in an existing neighborhood, what we're saying is look at your neighbors around you and you know, what are the patterns that you see and incorporate that into the proposed house design. So building patterns, um, roof lines, massing, um, windows and doors. Those are the primary features that we're looking at here. So in this case, this is an interesting con you know, addition. This is clearly contemporary, but the roof lines, the overall um, materials used, the trim, is compatible with the old house, but at the same time, it's clearly new. It's not pretending to be 150 years old. So that is you know, an idea that we would want to encourage in this area. This is looking at height and massing. So again, the main building mass is going perpendicular to the street or horizontal to the street. So those are, again, um, building design considerations that provide a harmony in the neighborhood. And these are some guidelines regarding parking, you know, doors, front door facing the sidewalk, um, parking behind rather than parking up front. Even though there are some existing houses that have this pattern, it's generally more pedestrian friendly to place the parking further behind. So in any case, we are going to require that. And this is just a, a visual example of you know, a, a large lot with the new houses on it built to the design criteria and the, and the zoning features that are in the proposed ordinance. So this is one example from beginning to end of a lot that is able to have a subdivision on it. Okay, there's another consideration where you might not have a lot that's big enough to have a division on it, but could be a two family house. And there are minimum standards in the family, in the, in the general residence district in here as well. So I'll go through an example in that case. So again, another example in the family district can be served by town water and sewer. Okay, how big is my lot? So it's um, 23,000 square feet. Do I have 75 feet of frontage for a new lot? No, you have 75 overall, and here's the building, and here's the lot. But this is a very large lot, 26,000 square feet. Do you have 75 feet of frontage? Yes. Can parking be accommodated at the rear of the lot? Yes, here. So this could be a two-family house in that case. And this is an example. This is not in Peterborough, but this is showing you know, how you, know, you can accommodate two families within a, a, a traditional house very attractively. Again, fitting in with the neighborhood, parking behind, front doors up in front, porches for either side. So that basically concludes my presentation, stepping through the draft ordinance. Um, I guess questions from the planning board and from the public. My question is, in terms of what this is supposed to accomplish in the town, do you have an estimate as to how many new housing units could be built? No, we do not have that information yet. Unfortunately, our IT person has not been able to prepare a map for us that will, which we will have most definitely for the uh, for the next hearing, uh, where we'll be able to identify which lots have the potential to be subdivided using the map, as Carolyn has explained, and which houses within this district might possibly be able to accommodate a second home. So we don't have that yet, but we will have that. An area with town water, but not town only concern is, again, one mentioned before about the 10-foot side setback, and is that something that you, you are planning to look at again, or would that neighbor have any recourse if that happened to be coming up in, 
uh, with his uh, neighbor's law. I think generally speaking, since I've been on this board, you know, when, when the citizens or neighbors come before this board and say, you know, a 10-foot setback, we have concerns about that. Uh, my, my history in working here is, you know, that's not a hard line rule for us. I mean, if we have genuine concerns from our neighbors, we're gonna consider that and, and, and under the conditional use permit of, of some sort, we would increase that setback. Um, so, you know, it, it's really dependent on the circumstances and, and, and the concerns of the, of the neighbors and the abutters who will be notified of a pending project. So, um, I'm going to... Yeah, I, I wanted to reinforce the point that it does specifically say in the ordinance that the planning board can modify the setbacks. Again, this is a conditional use, so the planning board has pretty wide discretion. Um, and they can modify them if they don't seem right, but... but Regardless of that, we're going to look at the 10-foot side yard setback um, for next time and consider increasing that. I have to evaluate. I have to look at the lots and um, look at what it is now and, and see um, if we can make that change. And I'm curious about the process forward and how, what are the steps you're going to take? What would the, implement and take, what would the implementation look like? Um, would there be requirements if you have extra space, if you have a second lot, or the potential uh, for a house to be built beside you and you didn't want that um, in the future, would there be a requirement to do that anyway? But mostly I'm just, I'm very interested in what's the next step and uh, what implementation process is going to be uh, put forward. Uh, all of our ordinances go on the town ballot and then the town votes and it's up to you. It's out of our hands at that, at that point. You can vote it up or, up or down at that point. If it does pass, um, then it will go, um, it will be part of the town ordinance. And at that point, you know, there's nothing that the Office of Community Development, the town, does until a um, a homeowner, developer, or somebody wants to use the ordinance and propose a project, which would come to the Office of Community, De uh, Community Development, uh, and would, the abutters would be no notified, and a usually we have some sort of consultation with the developer um, to sort of let them know things that may work or not work, and the public's always invited to those. And then um, we would get a usually a revised plan that comes back to the planning board for a public hearing. The public could get to weigh on that. We hope you found the planning board meeting today informative, and we invite you to come back to planning board meetings. Uh, we meet on the second Tuesday, uh, sorry, the second Monday of every month, and so we'll look forward to seeing you there. We welcome your comments and your feedback is very important to us, and there's a few ways that you can reach us with your suggestions and your comments. First, you can go to townofpeterborough.us, so it would be administration at townofpeterborough.us, or you can go to our website, which is townofpeterborough.com, and click on contact us, or you can pick up the telephone, the low-tech method. Pick up the telephone, give us a call at 924-8000, extension 101, and there's someone there who would like to speak to you. If you would like to see a rebroadcast of this episode or of any of the episodes of All About Town, you can, there's four ways actually that you can do that. You can go to Comcast On Demand. You can go to Channel 22 Public Television. Feel free to go to our website, which is townofpeterborough.com. Click on All About Town or go to locallookpeterborough.com and you'll, all the episodes are there for your viewing. We appreciate your being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next month.